Hey guys, welcome back to Paris Cakes. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you won't miss any new videos from me. And click that little bell icon so you get notified when I do post a video. Today we're going to be talking all about buttercream. A few people in my past videos have commented and asked for my buttercream recipe, so I'm definitely going to show you my buttercream recipe, so just keep on watching. I asked over on Instagram if anyone has questions about buttercream since I'm going to be filming today, and there's been a few questions. So if you want to see more cake related content, definitely head over to Instagram. It's at Kara Bakes Cakes, and you can participate in some of the polls and stuff like that that I do for my YouTube channel. So my buttercream recipe is very similar to most American buttercream recipes, which consists of butter, icing sugar, whipping cream, and vanilla. I'm gonna show you my triple batch buttercream and show you at the end how much it yields. So I'm gonna leave the recipe down below in a single batch, but I'm making a triple batch right now, which makes a lot of buttercream. So if you're just doing cupcakes or something, you could probably get away with a single batch. You're going to need three cups of salted butter, 1800 grams or 12 cups of icing sugar, one cup of whipping cream, and two tablespoons of vanilla. One of the questions I was asked is if I use real vanilla beans or if I use a paste or extract, and the answer is I use vanilla extract. Um, the vanilla beans are very expensive and I would have to increase my prices a little bit. So if somebody wanted to order vanilla beans, I could do that, but I don't typically do that because I don't wanna charge too much. Okay, so butter is the main component of the buttercream, and I'm gonna cut this up so I can soften it in the microwave. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the microwave to soften it a little bit. And I usually put it in for 20 seconds and then another 15 seconds, just enough so you can push in with your finger a little bit more than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just took the buttercream out and you can see how I can push down with my finger a lot easier than here. So that is the consistency of butter you're looking for. If you do heat it up too much, you'll have melted butter along the bottom, which is okay and it will come together, but this is the best outcome for how soft your butter is. Okay, so to mix up the buttercream, I use a KitchenAid mixer and a paddle attachment, but you could also use a hand mixer if you have that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the softened butter into my mixer and attach my paddle attachment. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my mixer on high and someone on Instagram asks, how long do you know how to mix the butter at the start? And I usually mix it until it gets white. So like obviously it's butter and it's not gonna get really white, but I like to mix it so it becomes white and fluffy. You can see here that it got a little bit whiter compared to what it was. I'm gonna scrape down the sides, then turn it on for a couple more minutes on high again. All right, so as you can see here, it's a little bit fluffier and whiter than when I started the mixer. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape all of this off. All right. Okay, now that my butter's all whipped up, and I scrape down the sides. I'm gonna add a cup of whipping cream and two tablespoons of vanilla. After you add in the cream, you're going to mix it up and then scrape down the sides again, just so you don't have any butter accumulating on the bottom that's not getting mixed up. All right, and then we're gonna turn it on again one more time. Okay, so one final scrape down before I add in the icing sugar. And then you can see the consistency. It just looks really clumpy. So if you have a big KitchenAid like this, I think this is like a 5.5 or six quart bowl, you can do a triple batch. But if you have something smaller, definitely only do a single or a double batch of this um, because the icing sugar will puff up over the sides. So I'm gonna add in. 1800 grams of icing sugar. I buy one kilogram bags of icing sugar, so that's a thousand grams. And I usually just eyeball it because I've made this recipe so many times. So if I turned my mixer on right now, it would make a huge mess. I used to take a dishcloth like this one and kind of hold it around and like hold it tight around the bowl so it doesn't come out. And I would hold it there until it mixed enough. But now I tend to take plastic wrap and I take and I wrap it right around the mixer like this and tuck it in the back and then kind of press around here. You still will make a little bit of a mess out the back here, but it won't be as bad and you won't have to clean up as much if you do it like this. So I'm gonna start slow and then as it mixes together, I'm gonna pick up the speed to around six or eight. Okay, 
Okay, now that it is mostly mixed, I'm going to take off the plastic wrap and let it mix without that. One of the questions I got from Instagram was from Daniela, and she said, is it true that buttercream needs a lot of confectioner sugar? And yes, that is true. This type of American buttercream does need a lot of confectioner sugar. This is my favorite brand of sugar that I've tried so far. It's just Atlantic icing sugar, and you do need a lot of it, 1800 grams for a triple batch of this. Now that the icing sugar is in there and mixed up a little bit, you can scrape it down. You're gonna put it on high again until it gets really light and fluffy. Okay, so it's almost done. I just mixed it up and you can tell that it's a little bit white and fluffy. And I'm gonna scrape down the sides one more time because you'll find that if you don't scrape down the sides, then you'll get a collection of like not mixed up butter down the bottom. If you get to this stage and you think it's too thick, you've probably added too much icing sugar. Um, and I guess depending on where you are in the world, it all depends on your ingredients compared to mine. You can always add a little bit more whipping cream to this stage if you find it too thick. All right, so we are all done. Okay, so this is the finished buttercream. I'm gonna scrape off the paddle here and mix it up a little bit by hand to just make sure I got everything mixed in. Over on Instagram, Sarah asked, why is it sometimes grainy? And if your American buttercream is grainy, you might be using too much icing sugar and not enough butter. You also may be talking about a different type of buttercream. You might be talking about Swiss meringue or Italian meringue buttercream where you use granulated sugar and egg whites because if you don't do that properly, the sugar won't melt and it'll, be, it'll cause it to be grainy. This recipe is pretty foolproof. It all depends on what you're looking for. So for me, I use American buttercream because I find that it works best for cake decorating. Um, and it also holds up really good in the fridge when I have to put a cake in the fridge overnight. Ryan left a comment and asked, what is your favorite flavor buttercream? And I just, I do like vanilla buttercream on its own, um, but I do love a good chocolate buttercream. I also love cream cheese buttercream. So if you'd like to see the cream cheese recipe, um, definitely give this video a big thumbs up and leave it down in the comments. Sam from Instagram says, why is it so delicious? <laughs> Sam's gotten a few things for me. I did her wedding cake and she's getting some cupcakes for me next week actually, so thank you, Sam. Okay, so the buttercream is good to go. If you're gonna crumb coat a cake or use it on cupcakes, I would say go ahead, but if you're doing a final layer of your cake, you need to get the air bubbles out. Michelle asked, how do you make sure you don't get a lot of bubbles in your buttercream? And Thea asked, how do you get the air bubbles out? I'm having problems with this. What I use to get air bubbles out is just use a wooden spoon. Um, for some reason, it doesn't work well with a spatula, but if you just use the wooden spoon, and kind of move the wooden spoon around, you'll get the air bubbles out. So just use your wooden spoon. You're gonna get quite an arm workout. You can see that there's already less air bubbles than there was, so it's just a lot smoother. So then at this point, you may want to color your icing, and I definitely recommend gel food color for that. Um, if you use regular food color, it could water it down and change the consistency, but the gel food colors will keep the same consistency as well. Okay, so now that the buttercream is all finished and you've colored it, you can use it to decorate your cake. Okay, so once you've done decorating your cakes and you have leftover buttercream, you can then store it in the fridge or the freezer. And Sheila over on Instagram asked, how long can you store buttercream? And um, what I like to do is grab a freezer bag like this and I fold down the sides. I like to just take it and add it to the bag. So you can store buttercream like this in the fridge for up to a month. Um, and then you can store it in the freezer for up to three months. If I know that I'm not gonna use this right away, I'll pop it in the freezer. If I know I need it within the next couple days, I'll just pop it in the fridge. Once your leftover buttercream is in your freezer bag, you're gonna go ahead and try to get all of the air out. I recommend writing the date and the flavor of the buttercream so then when you do have to take it out of the freezer, it's not a guessing game. So then you can just go ahead and pop it in your freezer flat like this. And then when you do have to take it out, take it out the night before you're gonna use it and just lay it on your counter like this. I would also put paper towel underneath because it does create some condensation. And then before you go ahead and use it, wipe off the bag of the condensation and then pop it in your mixer. Mix it up and you'll be ready to go. All right, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up scroll down to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos for me so i'm going to go ahead and put the recipe in the description box down below if you have any other questions about buttercream definitely leave them down in the comments and stay tuned for next sunday's video
Now that you have my buttercream recipe, click this link here for my top 5 piping tips to give you some ideas on how to decorate your cakes and cupcakes.